Hello, and welcome to another episode of Money Script Monday. My name is Luke Geller, and today we're going to talk about a millennial's guide to tax free retirement. The reason I wanted to talk about this is really because that's the age group I'm in, it's the generation I'm in, and it's something that I'm dealing with and see every day from my friend group, uh, from my siblings, and you know, I get these articles that are, are being shared with me, I get information being sent to me, and you know, not all of it's true, not all of it's relevant. And so I wanted to kind of break that apart, you know, look at everything and, and really, you know, give a guide or, you know, give at least a stepping stone or some stepping stones of how to get from point A to Z, which Z is being retirement. And so today we're going to look at, you know, really the how a millennial is in a different set of circumstances than, you know, any other generation before them. And what I mean by that is when we are entering the workforce, we are entering the workforce with the most debt that's ever been there, uh, that any generation has ever had entering the workforce, which is putting us way behind any other generation before us. And on top of that, the housing market right now is at an all time high, the highest it's been since 2007. And when you combine those two things, it leads to you know not a great set of circumstances for us. And so when you look at the two different routes that you can go, you can go the traditional route of retirement, which isn't, you know, isn't for us because it's not the set of circumstances we're in, but that route is you know, go get in an education, getting a job, staying at that job for 30 to 35 years, uh, investing in that pension, retirement plan, retiring at 65, and then living happily ever after. And that's just not the narrative that is around these days, especially for our generation. And so the new narrative is we need to look at all these different sets of circumstances and come up with a different way and a, 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 more, a way that's better for us of doing things. And so how can we do that? What are some things that we can do? Well, let's take a step back and look at the situation we're currently in. Well, when you look at where millennials currently are in retirement, uh, you have the average millennial has saved about $67,000 uh, in their retirement account. But if you take a closer look at that, that number's not, not even that high. Uh, if you look at the median number, it's closer to $19,000 in uh, a person's retirement account or a millennial's retirement account. And two thirds, about 66%, don't even have anything saved for retirement, which is a huge number. Yes, we have this 33% that do, and that's of the entire workforce or millennials in the workforce, uh, which is a scary thought. And the reason for that is when you look at it, you're coming out of college, you have this massive debt load uh, you, that you have to pay off, you can't buy a home, and those, you know, buying a home is uh, really the way that generations before us built their wealth by you know having that home equity that home equity that's grown uh, well we have to rent longer you know we have to pay off this debt first there's things that we have to do and then on top of that you know most of the advice out there is invest in you know your company's 401k especially up to the match well there's a couple issues with that when you look at where uh, millennials are at we're changing jobs every one to two years. You know, the, long gone are the days where you're gonna stay with a company for 30 to 35 years. What we're gonna do is we're going to work for a company for a year, you know, build up your LinkedIn profile, your resume, and then move on from there and try and, you know, instead of getting a promotion within your company, you're looking at outside sources and competition to have a, get a higher salary, to get a pay bump. And when you do that, you know, if you're investing in your company's 401k that has a match, well, you know, that vesting period is probably longer than one or two years. And then on top of that, you have to take that 401k and move it to your new company's 401k or else it's going to stay there and you don't know what, what what's happening with it, where it's at. Is it growing? Is it not? Are you losing money? And sometimes I had a friend in a, a similar situation where, you know, he just withdrew that money altogether because he said it was <laughs> easier to just you know, take the penalty and take the taxes, which I would not recommend, uh, than just moving it over to a new company. But I do see where he comes from uh, with that. So then where do you start? How do we, you know, instead of looking at the huge, massive number of retirement, you know, and uh, where can we go from there? How can we even take that first step? Well, I kind of look at it as, you know, going to the gym. Think about it. Uh, New Year's is right around the corner. And, you know, everyone's going to make their New Year's resolution to get in shape, go work out. 
Well, if you're one of those people and you're doing that, and I'm sure you've done this before, you go to the gym the first day and it's hard. You don't know exactly what you're doing. You don't have a set plan. You're going there, you know, you're you're working out, maybe putting up some dumbbells, uh, just trying to uh, get a burn. And then finally, um, you know, you, you get home, you're tired from working out, you're sore. The next day you're even more sore and you have to wake up again. It's hard. You know, that's the same thing as, you know, starting a financial plan for retirement. It's not easy, but the longer you do it, just like, when you're working out after about two, three weeks, you're not going to be as sore anymore. It's going to be easier to get up. Same if you're saving for retirement. If you're paying off that debt that you have entering the workforce, it gets a little bit easier and easier uh, the, the further you go along and the more you do it. You don't even notice that money coming out of your account anymore, etc. If you look at retirement experts, they're saying, you know, you need to save at least 15% of your income. Well, that's not that easy to do right away. But if you take it step by step, it's a little bit easier. And so what are some things we can put our money into? Because again, you know, a 401k is an option, but if we're changing jobs every so often, if we don't aren't getting that match because we're, you know, we're, it's not going to be vested by the time we, you know, move and change jobs or change companies, what do we do? Well, let's take a look at some tax-free options. And the reason I want to look at tax-free options is because think about this. As a millennial, uh, we're probably in the lowest tax bracket we will ever be in. Uh, hopefully you will be making more money in the future when you're 40 and 50 than you are right now in your 20s and 30s. Right. So if you're doing that, why would you want to take money and, and not and defer taxes to when you're in a higher tax bracket later on in life? It doesn't make a ton of sense. And on top of that, uh, if you look at the just general U.S. tax rates throughout history, we're in one of the lowest tax rates we've ever been in. So that's, you know, kind of a, um, you know, a, a double header there of having of being in an extremely low tax environment and where you're at. So why not pay the taxes now, let that money grow tax-free, and then take it out tax-free? So here are a couple solutions. You have a Roth IRA, and this is really where I would start. Again, if we're taking those baby steps, if we're you know waking up that first day, January 2nd, going to the gym and getting that first workout in, this is what I would relate to that. It's that Roth IRA. And the reason for that is because, again, you have tax-free growth. So the money you put in this account is going to grow tax-free, and then you have access to the principal. Anything that you have put in this account, you can take out without any penalties, without any fees, without any taxes as well. You can't touch uh, anything that uh, you've earned in the account, but all of the principal you can definitely take out if you need to in a bind. And then finally, you get tax-free distribution. So once you hit that retirement age, you can take that money out tax-free and not have to worry. Now, what are the, some, some of the cons? Why, why wouldn't we put all our money in the, into this? Well, one, you can't. Uh, there's a limit to how much you can put into this account. The limit's $5,500 if you're under the age of 50. So if there's a limit, it's a great starting point though, but you can't continually, uh, you know, eventually once you're making more money and you're, at, you know, in that second, third step to building a retirement nest egg, uh, you're gonna wanna look elsewhere. And then finally, you also have market risk in this Roth, in the Roth IRA because it's gonna be tied to the market. It's gonna go up and down with the ebbs and flows of the market, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because you have so much time before you do hit retirement to let that grow. And if you do lose some money, you have the, the time and the potential for it to grow back. So, you know, again, if you, uh, if you hit these contribution limits in a Roth, then what do you do? Well, actually, there's a vehicle called Index Universal Life as well. So it's a life insurance vehicle, but it's a tax-free vehicle on a life insurance chassis. So what we're doing is we're taking advantage of some of the tax codes that are written in law uh, that allow us to grow our money tax-free and tax-deferred inside of a life insurance vehicle without some of the limits that you have in a Roth IRA. You can put uh, as much money as you want into an IUA well, the, if it's structured correctly. Now, the, the benefits you get from it, you get that tax-free growth, you get that tax-free distribution, and then a little added caveat, you get some market protection because you're not exactly in the market, you're just tied and mirroring the market, um, which uh, you know can be uh, very crucial, especially when you're building that nest egg. You have a zero floor, so you're not gonna be negative in your, in your interest accounts 
but you have you have upside sometimes it's capped out sometimes you don't even have a cap so it's unlimited growth on that which can be very nice uh, some of the negative neg negatives or the downsides that you have in an IUL is that you don't have some of the early liquidity that you get into in a Roth. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing either because, again, these are for retirement. These are growing. You want them to grow and take that take this out when you're 60, 65, or 70 um, to supplement your retirement income. And then uh, finally, another downside risk is there is a cost of insurance. But again, because uh, of our generation, our age, Age, that cost is minimal because we're so young we have a long life expectancy millennials are gonna live longer than any generation before us and it's continuing to grow and so those are some of the benefits that you have so those are kind of the two first steps is building that Roth IRA paying off the debt building that Roth IRA up and then also finally putting money inside an IUL to, uh, for that final piece of retirement to help you grow and help that retirement grow. Those are three keys that you wanna do and that we can look at. And again, all we're trying to do is we're trying to take these steps because when you look at the entire picture, it can get a little overwhelming, but when you break it down step by step uh, and, and piece by piece, you know, then eventually you're gonna get to where we all wanna be, which is happy and in retirement and doing exactly what we wanna do. So thank you.